Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to derive an expression for the Nyquist's criterion for distortionless baseband binary transmission. Please note the prerequisite for this topic is the inter symbol interference, which I have discussed in one of my previous videos. You can watch the same by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now. And I'll leave the link of the same in the video description below. I'm going to start this discussion by writing an expression for the receiving filter output y of t at time t i equals to i t b, which is given by y of t i equal to mu into a i plus mu into summation k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, but not equal to i a k into p of i t b minus k t b. Here the first term which is mu into a i, this is the desired output produced by the ith transmitted bit. On the other hand, the second term represents the residual effect of all other previously transmitted bits on the decoding of the ith bit which is the current bit. This residual effect is called as inter symbol interference. Let us now state what is the Nyquist criterion for distortionless baseband transmission. The criterion states that the inter symbol interference should be 0. If the inter symbol interference should be 0, then in the equation 1, the second term in the RHS, which in fact represents the inter symbol interference, should be 0. Here I have written the second term at the RHS of equation 1 and I have said this should become 0. Let me just rewrite this. When I rewrite this mu summation part and a k, they all go to the right side, which is to the denominator of 0. Therefore, the RHS would still be 0. What remains is just this part, which is p of i t b minus k t b. Please remember p of t represents the shape of the standard pulse at the receiver. Let us now come back to equation 1 and understand a little bit more. Note that the first part of the equation can also be written as mu into a i multiplied by p of 0, where p of 0 is the normalized part of p of t and is equal to 1. The second part of the equation is the inter symbol interference and we are now trying to equate it to 0. The only possible way in which this part that is p of i t b minus k t b will result in a 0 so that the second term is eliminated and is equal to 1 so that the first term is retained is when p of i t b minus k t b is equal to 1 for i equal to k and 0 for i not equal to k. Please note this and let us come back and apply this RHS into the RHS of equation 1. For i equal to k, the LHS which is p of i t b minus k t b will become p of 0 and we have already said that p of 0 is equal to 1. So, when i is equal to k, we obtain the first term at the RHS of equation 1 and when i is not equal to k, p of i t b minus k t b is equal to 0. So, the second term is completely eliminated. Therefore, now we can say that by substituting equation 2 into equation 1, equation 1 reduces to y of t i equal to mu into a i, which in fact is the desired result indicating there is zero inter symbol interference. So, I can now state equation 2 represents the Nyquist criterion for distortionless baseband binary transmission. From the design viewpoint, it is informative to have the frequency domain representation of the Nyquist criterion which is given in equation 2. Now, I am going to borrow the concepts of sampling and in fact, I am going to borrow some of the equations from the ideal sampling theorem as well. Please note, in the ISI, we said the output of the receiving filter P of t is sampled at time t i equal to i t b to create a sample at the output. If I perform sampling for a large value of n, then I will obtain a set of sample points which are represented as p of n t b for n varying from 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 etc. 
So let P of NTB be called the sequence of samples generated by sampling the output pulse of the receiving filter P of T. We will now borrow some of the equations from the ideal sampling theorem and we recall that the sampled signal in the frequency domain is represented by G delta of F equal to Fs summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity G of F minus Nfs. If I apply equation 4 to the standard pulse P of T which is at the output of the receiving filter then I would obtain P delta of F is equal to Rb summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity P of F minus nRb. If you compare the RHS of equation 4 and 5 you would note that instead of writing Fs we have written Rb. Let us show you why. Please note Fs is equals to 1 divided by Ts which is a sampling interval and here the sampling interval Ts is equal to Tb and Tb is equals to 1 divided by Rb which is the transmission rate. So instead of writing Fs I can also write it as 1 divided by Ts which is equals to 1 divided by Tb which is equals to 1 divided by 1 by Rb. So, Fs can be rewritten as Rb. That is what we have done in this equation. Please note P delta of F, what we have shown here, is the Fourier transform of an infinite periodic sequence of delta functions of period Tb and the strengths of these samples are directly proportional to the value of the signal P of t during the sampling instant. Let us now come back to equation 5 which represents the sampled version of the output pulse P of t. The RHS of equation 5 is written by borrowing the concept of sampled signal expression from the ideal sampling theorem which is equation 4. Another way of obtaining P delta of f is by applying Fourier transform to P delta of t which is the time domain version of the sampled signal. This is what is shown in equation 6 here. So, P delta of f is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity P delta of t into exponential of minus j 2 pi f t dt. Here, please note P delta of t represents the time domain version of the sampled signal and this is given by P delta of t equal to summation m varying from minus infinity to plus infinity P of m t b into delta of t minus m t b where delta of t minus m t b represents the Dirac delta function. Equation 7 is nothing but the equation 1 of the ideal sampling theorem but here we have written it for the signal P of t as compared to writing the same for G of t in the ideal sampling theorem derivation. Now I will substitute equation 7 which is for P delta of t into equation 6 in the place of P delta of t. So that is shown in the equation here. So P delta of f is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity summation m varying from minus infinity to plus infinity p of m t b into delta of t minus m t b. So, this complete part is nothing but the RHS of equation 7 followed by exponential of minus j 2 pi f t which is this part of equation 6. Equation 8 is a very important equation for us because now we are going to apply the concept of Nyquist criterion which we defined in equation 2. So, let us go back to equation 2. Equation 2 is the Nyquist criterion for distortionless baseband binary transmission in time domain. Right? So, here we have said whenever i is equal to k, p of itb minus ktb reduces to 1 and for values of i not equal to k, p of itb minus ktb becomes 0. So, I will apply this concept into the current equation 8 by making a simple variable change. So, let m which is our variable here under the summation be taken as i minus k. When i is equal to k, we note that m is equal to 0. On the other hand, when i is not equal to k, m is not equal to 0. Let us now substitute this which is the concept from equation 2 into the current equation which is equation 8. So, when i is equal to k, 
P of MTB becomes P of 0, delta of T minus MTB becomes delta of T and this term is retained as it is because it does not involve either I or K which is shown in this equation. So, the summation part is eliminated because we have taken only one value of m and the value of m here is 0. So, for m is equal to 0, equation 8 reduces to integral minus infinity to plus infinity p of 0 delta of t exponential of minus j 2 pi of t dt. If I take p of 0 here and take the integral here, what I will obtain is integral minus infinity to plus infinity delta of t into exponential of minus j 2 pi of t dt. As I said, delta of t is an unit impulse function of area equal to 1. So, when I integrate a function of unit area, that will result in a 1. So, this complete part reduces to 1. What remains here is just p of 0 and that is what I have written here. Coming back to p of 0, we have already said that pulse p of t is normalized such that p of 0 is equal to 1. Therefore, when I substitute this into equation 9 here, I will obtain p delta of f is equal to 1 and that is what is written here. Let us call this as equation 10. Now, I am going to borrow the RHS of equation 5 which is directly taken from the ideal sampling theorem and I will substitute this RHS in the place of the equation 10's LHS. So, that is what is done here. So, Rb multiplied by summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity P of f minus nRb is equal to 1. Let us now take Rb to the RHS, so it will become 1 divided by Rb and we know that 1 divided by Rb is equal to Tb. Therefore, the final expression for the Nyquist criterion for distortionless binary baseband transmission in the frequency domain is given by summation n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity P of f minus nRb equal to Tb. Finally, we conclude that equation 2 formulated in terms of the time function p of t or equation 11 formulated in terms of the corresponding frequency function p of f constitute the Nyquist criterion for distortionless baseband binary transmission in the absence of noise. Well, with that we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more information on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.